Timestamps are in the description below. If you decide to click on one, it will take you to the news article of your choice. Hello, this is Stephen Clark, here with some news from Thailand and all over Southeast Asia. Got quite a lot of news articles today, let's have a look. First up, Thai police have publicly hit back at criticism of their Koh Tao murder investigations. In a tragic story, a British man killed in Thailand after fireworks exploded in his face at the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve in Thailand. Thailand's New Year holiday travel saw 159 road deaths in three days. Is manufacturing leaving China true or false? 7,000 Cambodians lose their job. Casinos shut as Cambodia bans online gambling. Two drug runners have been shot and killed by soldiers in the Mai Tsai district of Chiang Rai. Future Forward Party Thailand fights for basic rights for Thailand's ethnic population. Thailand's drought will be the worst in 40 years. The Thai baht hits 30 baht to the American US dollar. And a look at the firestorm in Australia as it engulfs a truck and they filmed it. But first up down to Koh Tao Island in south of Thailand and a murder tragedy. Koh Tao, Thailand. It's an island next to Koh Samui. Promoters call it Thai island of Koh Tao a paradise. Dive resorts boast of its crystal clear waters and western tourists flock there to its lovely beach bars. But among some foreigners, Koh Tao has taken on a more sinister reputation. At least nine European tourists have died or disappeared there since 2014. The British tabloids started calling it Death Island. Scientific fraud triumphs over justice. The Koh Tao Thailand murders. Thai police have publicly hit back at forensic media allegations that their forensic evidence into the highly publicised 2014 murder Koh Tao did not meet international standards, or Koh Tao Island if you like. The publicity about the allegations botched investigation began in 2014 with the brutal murder of two British tourists, David Miller and Henna Weatheridge, on Koh Tao Island of Saratani which is very close to Koh Samui. Two Burmese men were arrested over the murders. Police spokesman Pia Nuthayu referred to an online article posted by a Fairfax media featuring statements made by Jane Talpin, an Australian forensic expert. The article written by Lindsay Murdoch questioned the standard and process used by using DNA evidence in a murder case conviction. Jane says documents detailing how Thai investigators matched DNA from Myanmar workers were not provided to a Thai court in contravention of international DNA analysts and reporting standards. Jane visited Thailand in 2016 as a science witness for the defence case. Despite not being invited to join the police investigation, she accused the police of forensic science laboratory of being untrustworthy. Jane Turpin an independent consultant who has examined DNA evidence from police agencies in Australia and the UK and has received several forensic science awards. She travelled to Thailand expecting to testify in the case, but surprisingly she was not called to the stand. Police spokesman Pia says police produced DNA samples of the defendants in court claiming they matched those collected at the crime scene. Based on this evidence, the court sentenced both these young men to death. They remain in prison and are awaiting an answer on their application for a royal pardon. Speculation has continued in the years following the investigation that shady local Koh Tao residents had been involved but never prosecuted and that the two young Burmese men were patsies in the case. Pia, the police spokesman, said Royal Thai Police forensic work under the same international standards as the FBI and performs its forensic work extremely scrupulously. The officers who performed the forensic probe appeared as witnesses 
giving detailed explanations and addressing inquiries, objections raised by the defendant's lawyers. The two Burmese suspects initially confessed to the crime, but later retracted the confessions, saying they were forced to confess under torture. They maintained their story during the court case. Last August, the Thai Supreme Court upheld the death sentence for the two Burmese men. In September this year, the Thai Bar Council reported that the death sentence if the Burmese government sent a formal letter of request for royal pardon. Thai PM sorry for Bikini comments after British murders. General Prayat was quoted as telling officials, can they be safe in bikinis unless they are not beautiful? They, referring to the tourists, think our country is beautiful and is safe so they can do whatever they want. They can wear bikinis and walk around everywhere. Backpacking Britons killed on a beach were naive, Prayat was quoted as saying. The Thai British Embassy in Bangkok and the British people were outraged at those comments and demanded an explanation. I'm sorry that it hurt people, General Prayat said at a press conference the following Thursday. Not one of the Thai Prime Minister's greatest moments. This was a statement released by the murder suspects. Appealing for help. We both wish to request anyone who perhaps can assist us to be a witness in our case or has evidence about the crimes we are suspected of to urgently come forward and introduce yourselves to our lawyers and share your information with our defence team. This will really assist us in our defence and ensure justice is done. For us, our families, the families of the victims, please don't be scared to assist us at our time of need. May you all be happy. Thank you. Zoe Lin and Wai Foyo. Truly a tragic story. A British man killed in Thailand after fireworks exploded in his face on the stroke of midnight during a New Year's celebrations. Now listen to this. Officially, fireworks are against the law to be lit without a proper license and fully trained personnel. This is the law in Thailand. But fireworks were widely available on New Year's Eve and being sold by various street vendors across the city. Mr McLaren, who was originally from Corby, Northamptonshire in England, had been partying at the Miami Agogo bar before stepping outside and trying to light a 50 centimetre cardboard tube packed with fireworks. Gary McLaren, aged 51, had sustained serious face injuries and was found at the scene in Patia in a critical condition. Despite the best efforts of the medical staff, he died at the scene shortly after midnight. Apparently Gary had tried to light a tube of fireworks twice, but failed. It is believed the fireworks were faulty and exploded on the ground, while Gary was attempting to light them the third time. Patia police are continuing their investigations and contacting the British Embassy and relatives of Mr McLaren. Mr McLaren had been partying in a go-go bar with his fiancée Jasmine, pictured over his body before stepping outside and lighting the fireworks which would tragically take his life. Thailand's New Year's holiday travel saw 159 deaths in three days. Yes, the first three days of New Year's holiday travel saw 1,504 accidents causing 159 deaths and 1,549 injuries. Those figures would not include those in comas, broken limbs, broken backs, can never work again, have to live the rest of their lives in a wheelchair. I wonder how many of those there are. So... Bangkok recording the highest death toll and the most drunk driving cases. The highest death toll was recorded in Bangkok with 10 fatalities, but the most accidents were reported by the northern province of Lampung with 48. The Central Plains province of Nikon Pathom reported the most people injured in road accidents over the three days at 56. The figures dropped from the same period last year, thanks to the cooperation of people and the concerned organisations. Authorities are doing their best to prevent accidents, especially between 4pm and 8pm when they peak. On Sunday alone there were 531 road accidents, 47 deaths and 560 injured people. Drink driving was given as the most common single cause, present in around 32% of the accidents. 
closely followed by speeding at 31%. Director General of the Probation Department said that over the three-day period, there were 4,601 cases of drink driving reported, and Bangkok had the highest number, with 289 offenders followed by 254 in Khon Ken and 237 Maham Saran, both in the northeast. Are manufacturers leaving Thailand true or false? The US-China trade war has now dragged on for one year. Tariffs that have been roughly slapped on 360 billion worth of Chinese goods and 160 billion worth of Chinese imports. Has the US trade war affected China and the Chinese economy? The US-China trade war has caused considerable impact on China's economy and is shaking Beijing's leading manufacturers who are considering leaving or left China. Now, according to Chinese official statements, the scale is not that large. It is not all because of the trade war. A lot of foreign manufacturers in China are rushing to escape the tariffs put on by the United States. Reports show that Apple has called on major suppliers to consider moving 15 to 30 percent of iPhone products out of China and a trial production of its popular AirPods has started in Vietnam. Hewlett Packard, Dell are thinking of moving up to 30 percent of their notebook products in China to Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Sony, Nintendo are also planning to move some of their manufacturing out of China. Other companies including the Lenvo Group Limited, AC Incorporated, Asus Tech Computers are evaluating their options and I must remind you these are very very large companies. So what's China's Communist Party's take on all this? They are stating it's a more milder shift. Trade frictions have caused China's industrial supply chain to move abroad. Currently the scale of China's manufacturing relocation is not large and is mainly composed of low and medium end enterprises. Chinese Communist Party's official statement. Also they have stated some companies that have moved abroad are returning to China as they are not accustomed to the local environments. In general, there is no sign of massive manufacturing shift out of China. Chinese Communist Party's official statement. The increase in tariffs has forced companies to move production out of China. 80% of American companies, 67% based in the European Union. However, European companies are less affected by the trade war because their countries have not slapped tariffs on Chinese imports. They have their own reasons to reduce their independence on Chinese manufacturing, with most moving throughout Southeast Asia and closer to home. So, are manufacturers leaving China? No, according to the Chinese Communist Party official statement, Sources in Sanukville, Cambodia estimate around 10,000 Chinese citizens have left the city in the past few days, according to reports from the South China Morning Post. One-way tickets back to China have been sold out and the Sanukville airport is absolutely packed. The coastal town of Sanukville was filled to the brim with Chinese nationals working in the online gambling industry and supporting businesses. As much as 95% of all businesses in Sanukville are Chinese owned. However, the recent announcement by the Cambodian Prime Minister Hoi Sen to ban online gambling has sent shockwaves across the industry, turning the once thriving town of Sanukville into a ghost town. Chinese businesses have put so much money into Sanukville and now stand to lose it all. Not only the Chinese will suffer, but also the Cambodians. 7,000 Cambodians lose jobs. Casinos shut as Cambodia bans online gambling. Phnom Penh, capital of Cambodia. More than 7,000 Cambodians have lost their jobs and dozens of casinos have been shut since a ban on online gambling in August. With more losses expected when the government begins inspections this week, officials said. The southern city of Sanukville has emerged as a centre for gambling and many of the dozens of Chinese-run casinos that have sprung up there have online gambling operations. Prime Minister Hun San 
said this week that he would make the online gambling ban permanent after first announcing a halt in August, saying that the industry had been used by foreign criminals to extort money. Those foreign criminals he's referring to, I would imagine, are Chinese. Officials will begin inspecting all casinos nationwide beginning January to make sure they have shut down their online operations. Now, the government revenue will be hit hard with this move since online gambling had made contributions to the estimated 80 million per year in total taxes from casinos. And since the August announcements, an unspecified number of casinos had already ceased operation with 136 left nationwide by December. Now, Sanukville has been hit hard by the ban with a number of casinos cut by half from more than 70 to 36 remaining. Sanukville's Labor Department has confirmed that more than 7,700 locals have been left unemployed after the ban. So there could be a lot of cheap casinos for sale in Sanukville, Cambodia. Two drug runners have been shot and killed by soldiers in the Maisai district of Shanghai. They were shipping 600 kilograms of crystal meth amphetamine, ice if you like, which was seized in the operation. The men were killed during a gunfight between a group of drug runners and border police after the military task force detected 15 to 20 men making their way through a village in the Maisai district one afternoon. The men were ordered to stop for a search and questioning but failed to comply, instead opening fire on the task force. In the exchange of shots that followed, two of the drug runners were shot and killed. 600 kilograms of crystal meth amphetamine concealed in 20 sacks were found in the area. The hall is thought to have a street value of around 30 million Thai baht. Methamphetamine tablets and crystal meth, or more commonly known as ice, is routinely trafficked from northern Thailand's Golden Triangle where the Rik and Mekong River intersect with Thailand and Laos and Myanmar. The methamphetamine trade now is worth between 30 million and 61 million per year. Meth is being smuggled from Chiang Rai's Golden Triangle into Australia, New Zealand and other Southeast Asian nations. In 2018, authorities consequently seized a record-breaking 120 tonnes of crystal meth in the Asia-Pacific region. More than half of those busts took place in Thailand, where authorities confiscated more than 515 million meth pills, with seizures so far proving insufficient in making much of a dent in the problems. The Future Forward Party will fight for basic rights for Thailand's ethnic population. The opposition Future Forward Party will next year press for state recognition of the basic rights of Thailand's ethnic minorities, which includes rights of access to state welfare, ancestral land rights, stated by Future Forward Party leader Thanathorn. The embattled party leader, party spokeswoman Panika Kor Wanich, was in Tak, Pachamburi, Chiang Mai province to attend Hill Tribe New Year celebrations and to woo their support for the party. Tanathorn's address to the Hill Tribe people, he said that ethnic minorities have been treated as second-class citizens and have been taken advantage of by the states and states officials. He said that he cannot elaborate on the problems of the country's ethnic minorities as effectively as they can themselves over issues such as the land disputes with the state and their right to have access to state welfare because he does not feel their actual pain and suffering at the hands of state officials. Tanathorn urged his supporters not to lose faith in the party to carry on their fight against all injustice and restore true democracy to Thailand. Thailand, you can never work it out. One minute you're getting flooded, it's raining everywhere. The next minute you're heading for one of the worst droughts in 40 years. The Thai Meteorological Department is forecasting that the drought will be the worst in 40 years and last until May 2020. Deputy Director General for Operations said on Monday that 43 provinces in the north, northeast 
and central regions would be the worst affected, and that the most crucial period would be January and February as water reserves are low. There was unlikely to be any rain until May, the beginning of the rainy season, as high temperatures and the climate conditions known as El Nino prevails. The lowest rainfall ever recorded was in 1979. This year is likely to be worse than in 1995 and in 2015 to 2016, when it was so intense that water needed to be drawn up from the aquifers and people in central Bangkok metropolitan areas were affected and competed for water. Roads cracked, banks collapsed and salt water seeped into Patham Tani affecting the use of raw water for tap water production for Bangkok residents. So it looks like Thailand has a big, big drought on the way. Thirty baht to the US dollar. The greenback has dropped 30 baht against the US dollar, its strongest position in six years. The currency closed at 29.88 baht to the dollar yesterday. But Thai officials say the drop through the 30 baht barrier is not a concern and more of a blip than an ongoing trend to increase its value against the dollar. At 4 p.m. two days into the new year, the value is 29.73 Thai baht to the US dollar. The Bank of Thailand's Deputy Governor, the breaking of the psychological important 30 baht barrier was due to the unusual fluctuations and added that the US dollar was weakening against all currencies. The Deputy Governor pledged that after the New Year holidays, exchange rates will be less volatile as liquidity returns to normal and the Thai Central Bank will closely monitor the movements of the Thai baht. Late December reports in the US announces a series of drops in key measurable of the US economy that has made a contribution to the end of the year loss of confidence in the US dollar. Watch 38 coming down. Yeah. 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 Yeah.